I record. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Billionaire Barbers Mastermind. Every Wednesday we meet and I share information to educate, empower, enlighten, entertain you. Tonight, what we're going to do, we're going to go through the business plan step by step by step. This business plan, it was drafted by two attorneys. I know a lot of y'all have watched a lot of our students who work this business plan, who've gotten loans from the SBA, who've gotten loans from banks. I'm not saying that you're going to get a loan by doing this business plan. What I can tell you, this business plan is very thorough. In the front, it has the checklist. In the back, it has the financials. It is very detailed. The financials in the back, you're going to use your financials. They're just an example. Your rent is going to be different from their rent. Your light bill is going to be different from their light bill. If you're in Mississippi, your rent is not going to be the same as somebody in California or New York. But I'm going to go through this with you all. When you join the program, you have the business plan in a Word document and a PDF. So you just click a button, download it, copy, cut, and paste. So I'm going to pull up a business plan, a school business plan, and we're going to go through this tonight. So this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to share my screen with you all. And I want y'all to let me know if y'all can see the screen. So I'm going to make it larger. And I'm going to move it. Um, need to move this to the center. So I'm going to make it big. Okay, so we're going to make this big. And we are recording. So view. Zoom in. Hopefully y'all can see that. I'll make it bigger. Can y'all see that? Let me know. I'm going to look in the chat. All right. I have Courtney say yes. Sally's baby say yes. Pamela say yes. Carola say yes. All right. Angela say yes. Christopher say yes. All right. So now, <clears throat> Where has Barber Cosmetology School business plan? This is what you're going to do. Put your name of your school. So whatever the name of your school is, we're going to put, um, let me turn this around for the people that are on Instagram. So I'm going to let y'all tune in too. All right. So hopefully they can see it. All right, so what we're going to do, we're, we're just going to put um, J-A over right, yes. So J-A um, Beauty Barber Academy. business plan. So now we got the front part. That's simple. Okay. Is that simple? Scrolling on down. Right here. Start your business. Start your business. Now you can leave this the same if you want. All right. Scrolling on down. Now getting into the business plan. This is the checklist. And I want to be very thorough on this checklist. Before you open your school, you want to go through this business plan. Everybody needs a business plan. Some people say, I'm just going to do it off the top of my head. No, even a bank robber has a plan. You got to have a plan. This checklist is going to prevent you from making some costly and timely mistakes. You definitely want to go through this checklist. So we're going to go through this checklist right now. So we're going to share this screen because I definitely want y'all to see this. All right, there, checklist. 
researching similar businesses. You definitely want to Google similar schools competition in your area. And you want to look at, look, look at the location, how they're advertising, the staff, the hours operation. They may be operating in the morning. They may not have an evening or night class. That's an indication that you could do that. They may not be open on the weekends. You may want to open on the weekends. Evaluating current market trends. What seemed like a hot idea over the past few months might have been a fad. You want to look at that. Um, also, knowing strengths and preferences. Does it capitalize on your strengths? So what you all want to do, you all want to assess and reduce the risk by looking at this, examining your family budget. Because I'm going to tell you something, when you open your school, and some of you already opened barbershops, beauty salons, or whatever, you now have two businesses. Okay? You're now married to two people, two households. You got to pay your rent at your business. You also have bills at home. So we got to think about that. Don't forget that. Do you have enough money? When I opened my school, I didn't have no money left. I was believing in God, the high power. All I had was them clippers and faith. But I'm not telling you all to do that. But I'm a, I'm a believer. I, I walk by faith, not by sight. I don't invest by sight what I see. No, I'm a believer. That's what I am a believer. And I'm not telling you all to do that. But if you walk by sight, invest by sight, you're not going to reach your full potential because money is spiritual. God is spiritual. You got to plant that seed. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. It's planting season. You plant and then you water it and then you harvest. See, a lot of y'all want to pick fruit right now. It's not time to pick fruit. You cannot pick fruit if you have not planted. See, if y'all look at people right now, but y'all had to look at them in the past. What did they do 20 years ago? I mean, y'all looking at me, hell, I was planting 23 years ago, I was planting my school with zero students. It's planting season. Time to plant on solid ground, fertile ground. Yes. Then it takes three years to get a credit. Then it's harvest time and let that tree bear fruit. We're going to keep going. Knowing uh, how to change an economy. See, now think about that. COVID kicked in. Okay, what you going to do? Pivot to online. For the first time in history, now we can do distance education, online training. But you must have a physical location in order to do online. You just can't open up no online school and think you can give them hours and you don't have a physical location. No, you must have a physical location. Write the business plan. And that's what we got right here. The business plan is already done for you. It's already done. You, you don't have to do anything but copy, cut, and paste. Fill in the blank. Now, you can put some notes. How much money will you need to start? That depends. Depends on what? I'm glad you asked. When I opened my school in Nashville, Tennessee, 1998, I drove around town. Well, I gotta find a building. Get in your car and drive around town. Google something to pop up. You'll see something for rent. This is the best time to rent a building. While everybody's running for cover for COVID-19, this is the best time to strike a deal to rent your building. The best time. Because I'm gonna tell you something. The storm is just passing over. Pandemic ain't gonna be here forever. Okay, they had a pandemic years ago. If you Google, they had something very similar to this way back before we was born. It's not gonna always be like this. This is the best time to, to get your building and open your school. Now, I opened the school in 1998. Raggedy building in the hood. My rent was $1,100 a month for the first and last month. Got in. Had some crackhead friends, some drunks in my neighborhood, went to Home Depot every day, paid them by the day, got my school open. I spent about $27,000. Hey, I got a friend in Mississippi, he spent about 
I know people that spend, I got a friend who has a bunch of Paul Mitchell schools. His last Paul Mitchell school, he spent $3 million. Okay? That depends. Your rent is not going to be the same as they rent. But I'm telling you this, you want to find something that you can manage and it meets the state board requirements. If the square footage is 1,500 square feet, find a building that's about 1,500 square feet. If it's 3,000, find one about 3,000. Look at your state board rules and regulations. If you can't find it, DM me or email me and I have one of my assistants to send it to you. The rent, you got phone bill, utility. Call the utility company, give them the address, ask them what was the last 12 months bill for the power. Same with the water bill, all right? Now, the bill that I rented, my light bill, they said it was it was sky high. And I wonder, why is this light bill this high for this small space I got? Come to find out, we went up in the ceiling, we, we pressed a little white tile. It did not have the Pink Panther insulation in there. You know how the Pink Panther on the commercial, the insulation? We put that insulation in, cut our bill in half. Next, the equipment. By right, Richard in Atlanta, and I'm gonna answer all questions at the end of this. He will finance your equipment. Buy right in Atlanta. Snap will give you a $5,000 loan. They'll finance, but Richard will let you put a down payment and finance the risk. You can do a lease purchase. It's nothing wrong with a lease purchase. I lease purchased my equipment back in 1998. Why? I didn't have no money, y'all. He let me put $2,000 down. He financed the rest on the lease purchase. I paid $415 a month for probably about four or five years. I, I don't even remember. But I was able to get my 15 chairs and stations, five shampoo bowls, three hat drives, two nail stations. Boom, got open. Went to the Goodwill, the secondhand salvage store, and found 15 desks and chairs and a big old green chalkboard because they didn't have dry erase boards. Then I got my desk from my office and chair from Goodwill. If you do what you can do, God will do what you cannot do. It does not matter how you start. What matters is how you finish. Now, I got to share this with y'all. I'm going to tell y'all something. I didn't go down to codes because I knew I didn't have the money and the time, so I put newspaper up on the windows. Now, was I supposed to do that? No. You should have codes if you're going to do a build out. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I did it the jack leg way. I put newspaper up all over that, had my old crackhead friends and drunks to go in there and pay them by the day. But I'm not encourage you all to do that. Now, next thing, on the equipment. Some of y'all say, well, I'm just gonna buy my equipment straight out. I don't like uh, no lease purchase or whatever. I'm gonna buy my building straight out. I don't wanna owe nobody. Let me tell you something. If I had that mindset, one, I didn't have enough money to last. Two, if anything broke out, I didn't have money. Three, I didn't have the money to credit to buy a building. Didn't have the money to, to even buy the equipment all out. This person may start here. You may have to start there. It does not matter how you start. What matters is how you finish. Had I had that mindset, I'm gonna wait till I gotta, I can afford my own building. I ain't paying nobody else for it. Make them, let me tell y'all something. The government gave me $17 million. I made another six million on the clinic floor not including product sales, advanced classes, not including the real estate, not including the halfway houses. I started in that small raggedy building. I'm telling you all this because don't let these people get in your head. You gotta have this, that. Don't let the big chain franchise schools, so what they 11,000, 10,000, 20,000 square feet. It does not matter. T.D. Jakes, the Potter's house. He started in a storefront church with 10 members on a pregnant, and we're talking about the pregnant, counting the pregnant members on the Easter Sunday. So it doesn't matter how you start, y'all. I'm telling y'all, hell, I started cutting in prison for sodas and snacks, three cents an hour. So let's continue with this business plan. Inventory. I had a little inventory, y'all. Little inventory. I had like, five little kits 
pre-made with clippers and stuff. My students didn't even have money to put down. They didn't have money. They come with their clippers in a lunchbox with two clippers. And you know what I did? I gave out about a thousand free haircuts all over and eyebrow arches. First was on me. My clinic floor, the next month, started doing about $1,500 a week. And I had my students and I give them their kit. They would check it out and they would give me their ID and they would go on their clinic floor and we would cut hair all day, every day and had an hour theory. Clinic floor of jumping. It was averaging $1,500 a week. Plus I'm doing my clients, charging them full price. I'm telling you, if you do what you can do, God will make a way. He will make a way out of no way. You will, you will have dreams. You will be up at the midnight hour. You will be in the shower. You will wake up and God will put people in your life and, and put ideas in your mind. He still gives me ideas to this day. If you faithful over a few things, he will make you rule over many. Inventory. You don't have to have a lot of inventory. You just start where you start at. Leasehold improvements. Find out what before you sign a lease on that building, the plumbing, the electrical, find out what it's gonna cost. What's it gonna cost me? Okay, you gotta get an extra bathroom. Okay, well, what else you have to do? You have to do the electrical. All right, how much is that gonna cost you? Go to Home Depot and Lowe's. I just had some squirrels at my house and it was on top of my mama's uh, room on her side of the house. Squirrels weren't on my side. They was on her side at the top in the attic scratching up. She said, Chen, we got to call uh, um, a pest control or animal control or whatever. They came over to the house. They said we had these little squirrels. They went all around the house and said, we got to put these metal things by the gutters all the way around. Now the house is 10,000 square feet. So that's a, it had to cover a whole lot. And then they said that um, they was going to put a trap in the attic to get the squirrels or whatever. And then they said they was going to have to put some stuff down to get the, the waste or whatever that the squirrels have been doing. He wrote everything down, gave me an invoice, $10,000. Right at 11,000, they said 10% discount. My mom was shaking. She's 76 years old. She's on fixed income. And I said, okay. And then they left. So my mom was shaking. With Chen, what was I said, well, okay, we'll get rid of them. I called a guy who does building maintenance and all of that. And I cut out the invoice, the price, and I just had the supplies. We went to Home Depot and I gave it to the man at Home Depot. He looked at it. We had the little cart, the thing. Supplies was $400. He put it in his truck. I said, how much you going to charge for labor? He said, $800. So I spent $1,200 when they was going to try to charge me $10,000. I'm sharing this story with you all because y'all may get this building. Get the right contractor. Find somebody you can trust, someone that has your best interest. Because if you get the wrong contractor, you're going to be messed up. So that's very important. Find one at the church. Do your due diligence. The same way that y'all researched me before y'all got in my program, I know y'all Google me. I know you YouTube. I know you got on the phone and you call people and said, is it real? Is Millionaire Barber real? Is Chia real? Is it a scam? Do that. The same way y'all research me, do your homework on the contractor or whoever y'all going to rent the building from. We just said leasehold improvements. We're going to be on here for a minute, y'all. Scrolling on down. Hopefully you with me, Kaya, Tamika, uh, Sean, Brandon. Now, over here on Instagram, y'all can see it live. The license. Read your state board rules and regulations. It's going to tell you about the license. It's different. California. You got to go through the BPPE. The application in California is about $5,000. Now, in some other states, hey, the license is $300. Now, in Michigan, I remember he said he needed a $15,000 bond, a surety bond or whatever. And he said, I ain't going to be able to get up. I said, man, that ain't number the insurance bond. That's $150 or $100 a month to get that bond. 
Now, in Connecticut, up in that area, um, Marinella, they closed down. A lot of students lost their money and all that stuff. So they got to pay about 30000 That's 30000 cash that they had to put up. So different states, different strokes for different folks. Now, the accreditation and the U.S. Department of Education, that's federal. That's the exact same in every state. So these licenses, it depends on your state. That's why you read your rules and regulations. If you don't know which license and you're in the program, DM us or email us. Marketing budgets. When I went to my school, the marketing budget, I ain't had nothing but some flyers, business cards, postcards. But I'm going to tell y'all something. Word of mouth will go a long way. Giving somebody a free service the first time go a long way. If you had a good church home and you give out stuff, will go a long way. You see some single parent moms with some kids, you get them some free haircut cards. Now you tapping in to the spiritual. God's going to bless you. You, you. When you start doing stuff like that, you go to the retirement homes, the senior homes, old folks homes. You go to the, the places where they have people that are, are special with disabilities. Do them free for a while. Now you're tapping into spiritual money. It's going to come back to you, press down, shake it up, and run it over. Same concept. So, and then them would be your best customers. Single parent moms, high school kids, college kids, people on a budget. Hey, they paid my bills. They kept that school going, kept the lights on. Marketing now, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. It's free. Y'all need to set that up right now. Before your school is even open, set it up right now and start educating, empowering, enlightening, and entertaining. Just talking about being a student. Give free trainings. You don't even have to have your school open. Just be talking about it, showing different trainings, building up an audience on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. That's what Cynthia did, a Stay Ready Now studio. Before her school opened, she was already educating, empowering, enlightening, entertaining, just giving out free information. When she opened her school, there was a line. There was a line outside for people ready to enroll. Why? Because she what she did in the past. Okay? So that's something very important. Y'all need to go ahead and get y'all's name right now on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, your dot com name. That's free. Start setting them up. What you're doing now, you're dating them. You're warming them up. Warming them up. That, 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 that's what y'all doing. You, you, you got to warm them up. That, yeah, that, that, that's what you got to do. The men, we know about that. Travis, you got to warm them up. Red the barber, warm them up. That, you warm them up. The dating stage. Now, when it's time to marry, they're ready. See, if y'all think y'all just gonna open up the school, boom, and all the clients gonna come and students, no. Y'all need to be working on that right now. You, you, you should be cutting seniors right now on Wednesdays when you, when you slow or whatever. On Mondays, cutting the kids, warming them up, setting them up for when you get your school. Cynthia, school already packed. It took me a little time to get some students. I let them go free. Why? They don't look. They don't get paid while they're in school. Y'all can get five students right now. Let them go free or ten, and boost up your clinic floor. Charge half price of what they charge in the shops. That's better than a shop. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Working in a shop, you're never gonna be able to retire financially uh, stable unless. Well, no, nah, I take that back. If you're working in a shop, it's going to be about maybe that 5 to 10% of them will be able to retire successfully. But the other 90% will be broke. They're going to die behind the chair. So that's why y'all need to do the schools. Next, professional services. We're talking about the accounting, your accountant, people like that for professional services. I can hook y'all up with a very good accountant very economical that'll work with you. Pre-opening payroll. I ain't have no payroll, y'all. 
I was the janitor, the toilet bowl cleaner, front desk operator, director, uh, theory teacher, practical floor teacher. I was everything. I'm not telling you all to do that, but I was. I didn't have no money to pay nobody. But if you are not a licensed instructor, if you're in California, you got five years license, then you can go ahead and teach. Uh, Florida, y'all don't even need a, a teacher's license. Um, a lot of other states, you need an instructor's license. So now, if you're not an instructor, you can still open a school. You don't have to have an instructor's license to open a school, but you gotta have a licensed instructor to teach there. All right, so you put that license on the application, enroll yourself in your own school and give yourself your own instructor's hours and, license, and, hours and then take the test for the license. So it's more than one way. Insurance. You're going to have to have insurance in case somebody break in. Make sure you put your alarm in. I had a guy that didn't get the business plan. And, and you already know. You, you already know that it had to be a dude, a man. You already knew it was a man, Ebony, Phaedra. It, it was a man, uh, Jalice, I'm Courtney, Jane Hilton. You know it had to be a man. Kimberly, you, you know it had to be a man, Luana. Yes, it was, Ray Mika. He said, oh, I don't need that business plan. Okay, fine. You, you don't need it. I guess you know. He put his computer, flat screens, all that stuff in there. And guess what? He didn't have an alarm. He put his flat screen TVs in there, his computer and all that stuff, and didn't have an alarm. See how he read the business plan and invested in the business plan instead of being cheap and thinking he was smart, it wouldn't have happened. Guess what? Somebody broke in there, stole the stuff. He didn't have no alarm. He should have he got the alarm first. But you know how men are. And... We, we do stuff backwards. Y'all can, Ty, y'all can send us to the grocery store, put an ink pen in our hand, write down everything, Zandra, and give it to us, get some bread, eggs, and milk. Me and when we go to the grocery store, we ain't marking nothing off. Women mark stuff off. We'll get the bread and eggs and get our way home and then forgot the milk. Now we get cussed out. So men, I'm pleading with you, man. I'm begging you, man. We got to start listening to these women. Follow the steps. Follow this checklist. Do your business plan. Get in the program. Don't think that you're smart and you can do this. If you don't, I'm telling you, you're going to make mistakes. I can give you one even bit bigger than that. The guy didn't get the business plan. He talked to me for a while, thought he was smart. I'm not going to beg y'all or uh, gas y'all up to get in the program. This program is for you all, not me. He didn't get in it. I said, okay. And he talked kind of smart, but I'm laid back. I got two ears to go in one ear and out the other. Guess what? He done rented a building, paid a five-year, signed a five-year lease. Got his equipment, did the build out, did all of that. Guess what happened to him? Guess what happened to him? Submitted his application. State board came out. Building, square footage, too small. He calls me up. Man, they said my square footage is too small. Well, did you read the rules and regulations? Did you do your business plan? Did you join the program? I, you should have known to read your rules and regulations to see the square footage, how many bathrooms on. He had one bathroom, plus it was too small. Well, what am I going to do, Chin? Uh, turn it into a barber shop? Oh, ain't nothing I can do? No. Uh, it knock down the wall and build on to, to, to that man's building you know, or whatever. I don't know what you're going to do. Oh, man, well, you should have joined the program. I'm gonna tell you something. And I wanted to tell him this, but I, I ain't want him getting mad or whatever. Ignorant education is expensive. 
Some of y'all say, oh, that program is expensive. Well, ignorance is more expensive. Yeah, you're going to waste more time and more money trying to figure it out yourself. I've been doing this for 23 years. I don't know how to cut straight hair, do relaxers, perms, color. Don't ask me anything about that. Don't ask me how to cook. But one thing I do know, I know about schools. That I can tell you. Carry on. Rainy day fund. I can't even stress the rainy day fund. We got beauty professionals on here, barber, stylists, nail techs. Some of y'all been in the industry 10 years, five years, 20 years, 30 years. COVID-19 comes. It ain't even been a year. And y'all didn't have a rainy day fund. Some of y'all didn't have a rainy day fund. That's biblical. God said it's going to rain, but there's going to be droughts. That's biblical. Now, I know beauty professionals never thought a drought was coming. Y'all done made money for the past 100 years. I've been licensed 31 years. Yeah, 30. Now, Jay Hilton, she's been licensed longer than all of us, y'all. Jay Hilton, she probably been licensed 50 years. And I'm not exaggerating. And she ain't never seen a drought. Stylist barbers had never been out of work, but this pandemic put a lot of us out of work. But if you saved, if you read the Bible, if you, if you studied his word and believed it, you would have stored up for the drought. Drought came in March. What happened? A lot of people had to shut down their shop. A lot of people lost cars. A lot of people lost a lot of stuff because you didn't follow the Bible. Even the squirrel stores up, even that woodpeck out in California that have been storing them acorns up in this tower. And the power was messed up. When they went up there and, and checked the power, there was about 300 pounds, I think it was 300 pounds of acorns that fell out. Y'all can Google this. That woodpecker out in California and his shoulder just falling out. Even the woodpecker had sense enough to store up. And like y'all laugh at me, I dropped a Toyota camera, 151,000 miles. I store up. Ain't no sense in buying Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Prada, all of that crap. Now the pandemic hit, what you gonna do? Y'all buying big cars, big trucks? No. Sacrifice. If you save your money, your money will save you. Okay? Keep going. Rainy day fund, because I'm telling you, the drought is going to come. That's biblical. Most of the things done in greatness is, look, is done in preparation. The drought, the drought is a blessing. Yeah, the, this drought, this pandemic has been a blessing for some. Gave you time to sit down, rest, reset, think about stuff, get your online business. The Bible's, the Gardenese fed about four different rivers meaning four different streams of income. Some of y'all just had one stream of income, cutting hair, styling hair, nails, or whatever. When God has blessed you with all these gifts and talents, God said your gifts will make room for you. Some of y'all is operating at the lowest level of wealth, muscle, exchanging time for money, but this pandemic made you pivot, disruption. What do you think the Bieber man did when the phones came? What do you think Blockbuster did when Redbox? What do you think the taxi driver did when uh, Uber and Lyft, if this ain't nothing new, what do you think the Walkman did? I had a Walkman. Y'all remember the Sony Walkman? Now the iPod, the iPad, the smartphone. Well, you got to pivot. I didn't have a rainy day fund. I did not. When I opened my school, some people say I was crazy. I was believing in God. I was. I'm not telling y'all to follow what I did. I'm a believer. I invest by vision. I invest by the spirit. I'm not, I don't invest based on what I see. If I operated based on what I see, I'm an ex-convict, released from prison with no money, no job, no driver's license, bad credit. If I listened and operated based on the facts, I never would open a school. I would have got a job and my name would have been right here on my khaki suit with a hat. 
I would have been working all my, I, I would have been making probably ten dollars an hour right now. I don't operate like that, and you shouldn't operate like that. You should operate based on God. When God orders your steps, it's like going where you cannot see. It's scary. Yes, it is. If you embarking on something, if you don't have a little fear or whatever, but God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but when going where you have not been, it's a little different. If you can do your dream all by yourself, if you can achieve that vision all by yourself with no help of experts, you're dreaming too small. It's not a dream. It's not even a goal. It's not even a vision. You got to dream like a fool. If you don't, if you tell people your dreams, if they don't laugh in your face, you're not dreaming big enough. You got to dream like a fool. You got to think big. What about when I had no students? What, what people say, well, what if you fail? What if you succeed? If you fail, guess what? You be right back where you started. My mentor told me, she said, Chin, you're already at the bottom. I said, what do you mean? You got out of prison, what'd you do? I cut half. Okay, what are you doing right now? I'm cutting half. If you open this school and you don't follow my blueprint and you fail, what you gonna do? I'm gonna go back cutting half. You're already at the bottom. So, so a lot of y'all already operating at the bottom. What are you scared of? You ain't got nothing to lose. If you went out there and opened the school and closed your eyes and didn't follow the blueprint and failed, you wouldn't fail because you'd just be right back where you're at right now. If you don't open the school, you're still going to be right here for the rest of your life. You're going to die behind a chair, an old woman or an old man. There's nothing wrong with that if that's your vision and dream. Nothing wrong with working in the shop, owning the shop, a uh, sweet, but I'm not here to talk to y'all. I'm here to talk to the people that's thinking big. See that shark? If, if you put a shark, if you cap, if, uh, put a fish, a shark in an aquarium, in a fish tank, although that shark was divinely designed and cosmically created to grow eight to 12 feet in length, it will only go, it will only grow nine to 12 inches. Why? Although godly, divinely designed, and cosmically created this shark to grow eight to 12 feet in length, it only grew nine to 12 inches. Why? Because of the environment is thinking in its head. So I'm not here to talk to the, to, to the little people in the bubble. I'm here to talk to the people that have a vision, a dream, that's thinking big, that want to live big, want to travel big, want to dress big, want to drive big, want to leave a legacy to their family, leave, leave a legacy for their kids and their kids' kids. That's who I'm talking to. Didn't have a rainy day fund. People saying, oh, well, you need to have six months uh, put up. I didn't have no six months put up. Had I listened to them, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh, you can't open the school, you're a convicted felon. Quit listening to the naysayers. You got to listen to God. That, that's who you got to listen to. Somebody that blew and the winds obey, the waters obey, gone down. Failure factors. Biggest failure factor, listening to your broke family members and friends. That's your failure factors. Quit listening to the ninjas. You listen to the high power. What did God tell you? I don't care what he told them. God gave you the vision. Write the vision and make it plain. He didn't give the vision to your mama. He didn't give it to your wife, your girl. He didn't give them the vision. He gave that vision to you. When God gives you a vision, he don't give it to everybody else. He only gives it to you. They can't see what you see. Nobody in my family, none of them could see it. It wasn't that my mama was jealous or mad or didn't want me to open the school. She just didn't see it. And my mama loves me to death. Your wife, my husband, whoever, kids, they probably love you to death, but if God don't give them the vision, they can't see it. But I'm going to tell you this. 
when you start working on your dream and vision, they're going to start seeing it. And I promise you, when you get your accreditation and God opens up the windows, the financial floodgates, I bet you they're going to see it. They didn't, my family, friends, and all the people in Nashville and all over the United States, they didn't see it back then. I bet you they see it now. Everybody sees it now. Now we're going to keep going. I don't have to go through these failure factors. Y'all can go down this checklist. It could be a lot of reasons you failed. Running out of money, lack of business planning, uh, insufficient inventory control. It's a lot. But y'all can go through this checklist yourself. Um, so we're going to keep going. Learn about competition. How do you learn about competition? We already knows it. Nosy rosy. That, that, that should not even be hard for none of us. We get our phones. We go on Instagram and look. We scroll. You on Clubhouse? Nosy. You click on a picture. Then you click on a profile. Google the schools in your area. Go on a Facebook page. They can't hide anything. That's the great thing about social media, the internet. Your competition can't hide nothing. They got to put everything out there so they can get more students. Okay? I saw how Paul Mitchell was getting their students. It's fully automated. I created them for the people in the gold program. You can do the same Facebook ads, same Instagram ads. Everybody's on their cell phone. So more competition. Look at what they're doing. Drive by there. Peek in the window. See your boyfriend or girlfriend or a kid or somebody over there. Act like they want to enroll in school. Look, call them. Call them from your other friend's phone. Put the block on it. Hey, uh, how much is y'all tuition? Seven thousand. Okay, bring. In. How much y'all tuition? Oh, eight thousand. Boom. How much y'all tuition? Seventy five hundred. Okay, that lets you know to charge six thousand or sixty five hundred because you're not accredited. Check on your competition. Look, I'm nosy. I'm always looking at the gurus to see what type of funnel they done built. Uh, I'm looking at the social barber because she got all these three degrees from the universities with the um, the computer science degree. I'm looking at people's graphics, they funnels. Oh, this person did a million dollars in their funnel. Look, I ain't even go as far as this, y'all. I buy a product. Yes, I will. I, I bought um, several products, book funnel products, just to get their emails. And then I torque the emails and put my name on it and change a little bit and put it in my sequence. Let me tell y'all something. Ain't nothing wrong with copying as long as you copy the right cat. These multi-million dollar companies have spent millions of dollars to figure stuff out. I just buy it get in the funnel, get in an email sequence, boom, and create mine. Now, I know a lot about the school. That's it. All the other stuff, I didn't copy. Even the blueprint, this is Miss Belma's blueprint. She just let me partner with her. I'm just the messenger. Keep going. Learn about the competition. All right? See, see how they flies look. See how they business cards look. Look. I done hacked uh, Paul Mitchell's um, website. Y'all can get a website just like it. They spent thousands of dollars. You can have one just like it. I done cloned it. When y'all get the ClickFunnels, y'all DM me, and you get the ClickFunnels affiliate, I'm going to give you that website. All you got to do is plug and play. I'm going to clone it and give it to you. So we know about the competition. All right? Now. Keep going. Industry structure. Competition between the firms. Determine the number of competitors in your industry. How many people in there? Are they just doing straight hair? Look, let them know. You do curly, wavy, kinky, all textures of hair. Also, let them know, oh, we're a small school. We're tight knit. Oh, the owner. I'm the owner. Yes, I've been in license for 20 years. To John Horn. Now, your big schools, oh, so you want, you want to go to the big school? Oh, you just want to be a number where they don't care about you. You don't want to just be a number. We're family here. 
We love you. We take care of you. We take you by the hand and show you. Oh, big smile, you're not gonna learn nothing. See, it's, it's ways and words to use to deter them, even in your marketing. It's ways to use certain things. It's ways to use certain words. I don't care if you, I don't care if Supercuts is done posted up and they got $10 haircuts and yours $40. Get you a big sign in the front of your building. We fix $10 haircuts. Simple as that. Okay, we're going to keep it pushing. Your business location. What is the best location? The best location is a location that you can afford for three years. That's what my mentor told me. Why? In getting in the program, it's going to take you three years before you can get accredited and get the government money. Right now, you can get up to $10,000 for the payroll grant. They, they wire that money to your bank account. Sub and unsub student loan, everybody qualifies for that unless they defaulted on another student loan. They can qualify up to 19,000. So y'all can add, it's 29,000. That's why you see some of the franchise schools charging 30,000, 35,000. Before I retired, my tuition was 20,000. Y'all, I never thought beauty, barber, cause all this stuff, schools, who would ever thought they was charging thirty and thirty-five thousand? When y'all get financial aid, y'all can do the same thing. Oh, I don't want to charge that much. Oh, what charge ten thousand? What the student just get to go for free? I mean, you know. So location, I know y'all want to start out big. I know you do. I want to start out big, but if, if you don't, use common sense. If I had started out even a little bigger, I would have shut down and I wouldn't be where I am today. Start out small. Now, after I got my accreditation, I had the smallest barber school in the United States back in my day. When I got my accreditation, y'all, and God opened up the floodgates, I moved on the other side of the town and kept that school there too. The building was 11,000 square feet. I had over 200 assigned students at that school. It became the largest barber school at that time. So what I'm saying to you all, I started small. Yes, I did. I did the bare minimum. But it doesn't matter how you start. Find a location that you can afford for them three years because I'm telling you all, them bills coming every month. I'm gonna repeat that. Light bill, water bill, phone bill, um, gas bill, uh, alarm bill, internet, them bills coming every month. Y'all not hearing me. Them bills coming every month. Every month, them bills are gonna hit you. It, they're, they're, they're coming, you, you can count on that. I know a lot of times y'all say, I can't count on, I can't count on this. You can count on them bills coming every month. And if, if you don't pay that light bill or whatever, you can count on them cutting, them, cutting the lights off after a while. So we're going to keep going. Oh, yeah, about the location, check on the zoning. That's in here right there. That's important. You might want to get close to a, a big chain store. You know, if there's a shopping uh, center, there's a big grocery store or something, that might be smart so you can feed off of uh, the grocery store. Think about that. You might want to post up close to some apartments or whatever to get all those people. <clears throat> Keep going. Look, let me tell y'all something. We have not even got into typing up the business plan. We ain't even got into that. We still on the checklist. This right here alone is gold. Location checklist. Is the facility large enough? Does it meet the state board layout requirements? You know, you so a lot of states you need two bathrooms. Florida, you just need one. Do you have to make leasehold improvements? We have to do an electrical or plumbing, ventilation work. I mean, read all this. Will neighboring businesses patronize your business? Any, any competitors located close by? Y'all ain't gotta go far. McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, 
They'll post up right by each other. Sure will. Is a location zone for your type of business. Think about that. Certain places you can't get a liquor store. Certain places you can't put a strip joint. So you got to make sure it's zoned. Does it have adequate parking? Think about that too. Is it upstairs? Some people don't want to go up, walk upstairs. People lazy. I mean, think about that. Some people don't even want to park far away. They keep driving around and around. Look. I'm gonna share a secret with y'all. Make sure my sister is not on here. All right, I'm gonna share this secret with y'all. Don't nobody know this but y'all. All right, Miss Jane Hilton, Xandra, don't nobody know this but y'all, Ty. I'm gonna share a little secret with y'all. My auntie says she died some years ago. She had a handicap. Um, thing. My sister took it and used it because my sister was lazy. She was overweight, uh, 298. She was like 298. She didn't want to be 300 pounds. She 298. When she got to 298, she didn't want to be 300 pounds. So she started doing drastic measures. She thought she was slim because her friend is 350. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, they eat pig feet, oxtails, chitlins, uh, macaroni cheese, sweet potatoes, hot water corn. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, barbecue ribs, all that. So all her friends, 350, 400. So since my sister was 298, she thought she was small. You know, they wear the wedge heels. Not the high heels, the wedge heels with that uh, big fat mahogany wood piece on it to hold them up. And then when they would leave a uh, 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 concert, they take their shoes off and they'd be walking like that to the car. Well, I'm telling you something. My sister, that handicapped sticker, my aunt died, it's been probably about seven, maybe six or seven years. My sister still got that handicapped sticker. It's expired. But you know what? It's expired. And she changes it every year. And I said, you know what? They're going to get you. And I rode with her to Walmart one day. And it was a police out there. And I'm thinking, look, he gonna get, he's going to get us. I said, you don't need to be parking. She got the handicap seat because she's too lazy to park far away. And when we would go places, she would drive around for 15 to 20 minutes till a, a parking space up close would get there. But when she got the handicap sticker, she'd always park. And the police was there, so she done got out. You know that, that loser's limp, that fat person limp? She got out like that. Police just look, he ain't say nothing. I'm sharing this with you all because remember this story I just told y'all. You want adequate parking for your students and your staff and your customers. Keep it going. Let's go to the next one. Lease checklist. Before you sign your lease on the dotted line, and when they tell you how much the lease is, this is what you want to do. How am I supposed to do that? Ask them for a year's rent. That's what you want to do. When you can at least that building, Ty, we would Elder, Addie, Amanda, Andrea, Andre, Angela, Benjamin, Brandy, Shanae, Charles, Christina. Guess what? Hey, Christopher. Davion, Denise, Ebony, Phaedra, Sally's baby, Jalise, Jamel, Jane Hilda, Giovanna Jones, Jessica, uh, Canary, Keith White, Kimberly, Kenedra, El Myers, Luana, look, Latera, Lavelle, Michelle, Miss Diva, Miss Almeida, Natural Hairology is up in the hair, hey, Natural Hairology, Pamela, Paris, Bring me something, my Nashville buddy. Raising Lee Barbershop out in New York. Red the Barber in Ohio. Rihanna, stylist Tamika, Tunisia, Ty Bailey, uh, Valia Jefferson, Victoria, Vivian, Zandra. Let me tell y'all something. You asked for 12 months free rent. 
They may look at you crazy, you look at them in the eye. Y'all need 12 months free rent because it's going to take me a while to get this ready. I have to have it stay board ready up to colds. We got to bring the stations in, the plumbing uh, for all of the shampoo bowls, the hair dryers. It has to be a certain water so it won't be knocking the power off. I probably got to put a hot water heater in here. We got a lot of stuff to do. It's going to take me a long time to get this ready. I need about a year's free rent. Ms. Bellman taught me this, y'all. He didn't give me a year of free rent. I never get Mr. Kirk. He gave me six months. It took me a month to get the build out ready. I was over within a month. So I had five more months of just, you know, good. If I asked for six months, he probably would have gave me three. Ask for 12 months. You, you might get six months. You might get three months. Okay, you might get a month. But at least ask. I want to share that with you all. That's a little nugget. The lease checklist. Y'all can check all of this out. No one knows more about the lease that building than the previous tenant. If you can find the previous tenant, that would be great. They can tell you every leak, uh, every mouse or roach or whatever up in there. Now, this is just a checklist. Before signing the lease, it's certain things you gotta do. I told y'all to talk to the previous tenant. Have a maintenance person to come in there and look around. You're not a maintenance person. No, you're not. I know, I know we think we're smart as artists, but we're not maintenance people. And you don't even need to try to do that. It's like the little old lady with the cock-sided wig at church. She's not a hairstylist, Ty. Victoria, she's not a hairstylist, so she don't need to be trying to do that wig. No, not a hairstylist. So don't try to do things that an expert should do. Have a maintenance person to come in and look to check things out to see if it's okay. Because you're going to miss something. It's like your car breakdown. Why, why your car break down and then you raise the hood up and you're looking at the hood? You're not a mechanic. What are you looking for? What, what are you looking at? Same with that building. You're not going to see everything. The air condition. Okay. Another brother, Tanisha. It, it always got to be a dude. It, it, I love when I talk to them on the phone and they talk crazy and think they smart. He did not get the business plan. He, he didn't even have to join the program. If he would have just got the business plan, it would have saved him $5,000. This is what he did. He signed that lease about five or six months later. It was hot as heck that summer. His commercial air conditioning unit went out. Guess what? He had to replace it. And you know a commercial air conditioning unit costs about five or six thousand. He calls me up. Man, they talking about I need I'm I gotta replace this. Well, if you would have got just the business plan minimum, you would have saw the checklist to check the air conditioning and heating unit. And you would have saw that it was old as Methuselah. Old as Methuselah. Wasn't under warranty, so they would have let you know to tell the landlord, look, it needs to be your responsibility because it's out of warranty. So that's just something before signing the lease. We ain't even did the business plan, y'all. Uh, check the utilities. Water bill might be high. I never forget. Water bill was sky high one month. Well, the toilet. You know how the, the, you, the chain in the toilet, the toilet just run, run, run? Well, I called a plumber in, he fixed it. He gave me an affidavit. So I was able to get a refund on that. So it's just small things. Uh, let's keep going. Sign a short lease. You ain't got to sign no big, long, drawn out one, but make sure you have the option to renew. I repeat. Make sure you have the option to renew because you don't want them putting you out. All right. We only going to, I'm telling y'all, we only going to get to the checklist. Next week, we'll go through the business plan. This, this is just a checklist. All right. Starters LLC. 
If you don't know how to do an LLC, I can put y'all in contact with somebody that can. Some of y'all know how to do that yourself. But if not, I have somebody that can hook you up. Have your EIN, all of that stuff. Open up your business bank account. A lot of y'all already know that because we got a lot of entrepreneurs on here already. Uh, then get your lights turned on and everything. Get your outside sign. I've seen a lot of y'all get that. Sharonda Bowman had her, Cynthia. And I love to see when y'all get those signs put up. It just brings me joy. Um, this is after, let's see. Y'all can do that before a sign, some of this before a sign at least, but make sure you, um, I always say like after some of this because you want the address of the school. But we'll keep going. Now it's time to go uh, get the lights and water and all that kind of after you sign the lease. That's after, not before. You'd be surprised how people um, try to do stuff. Leasing versus purchasing equipment. It's got its positive and negatives. Um, and when y'all contact Richard at Buy Right, you can ask him, well, okay, if I lease it, or can I do a lease purchase? Or do I just need to buy it straight out? Cash availability. Is there a sufficient cash flow to handle monthly lease or loan payments? If it's not, y'all got to do more hair. Stay open later. Open the morning, have a morning and night class. Tax benefits. Uh, when the equipment depreciates. Now that's where uh, one of my accountants, Marquita Miller, she's very good at a lot of this. I don't get off into that. Uh, the, the estimated depreciation of it and all that. That's her department. Um, let's see. What is the operable lifetime of the item? How long do you think this is going to last? We, we, we're still on the checklist. Um, when are you going to have to replace it? Now, now we're getting to the business plan where you're going to put your name here. You're going to put your address here, your email, phone number, website. This is just the checklist, y'all. Look, we ain't even went through the business plan. We're going to do this next week. We'll do that next week. Checklist was enough. Just the checklist, y'all should have learned a lot. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open up the floor because we got a lot of questions. A lot of questions. So I'm going to start answering questions. That's what we're going to do. Okay, we back recording. How does the school get paid until the accreditation goes through? Are they paying out of pocket? Yes, to make them. Imagine you open a school and you got 10 students and they don't have no money. It doesn't matter because you got free labor. They're going to work on the clinic floor every day, all day. They only need an hour theory. That's like you got a salon with 10 stylists or 10 barbers and they work behind the chair all day, every day, 30 to 40 hours a week and they give you all the money. That's what it's like owning a school. They sell products, they don't get a commission. Start your own product line with the school. I had my own product line 20 years ago when I had the school. So, and the student can pay a down payment and they can pay a monthly payment. Oh, they don't have no money, they have money. They go out to eat, they buy their weed, their cocaine, they buy uh, the designer shoes, designer clothes, that they buy the wigs, lay fronts and all that stuff. They have some money. So they can make, Payment plans. I just started. Is the business plan the first thing I need to work on? First thing, yeah. Business plan and your rules and regulations. So you just get in the program. I will study the rules and regulations. I will study the business plan. I will watch all the mastermind videos because they're going to give you motivation, inspiration, information, dedication all of that. So that's what you should do when you first join. 
and write down what is your why on your board. In the process of creating a business plan, when looking for funds, what are some questions you should ask your lender to go and prepare as opposed to going and buying side? All right. Um, in the business plan at the end, and we're gonna go through that next week, the financials are there. And you definitely wanna work, do the financials uh, in that business plan, but we're gonna go over that next week. And I'm gonna show you all exactly how that goes. Um, because they want to know how you're going to make money. But in the back where the financials are, it shows if you have 10 students and tuition is 10000 that's 100000 uh, If you have the clinic floor, you're doing 1000 a week. This is an estimated numbers. Then you open 50 weeks. Close two weeks because of Christmas, $50,000. Um, so that's how you can do that. So let's see. We're gonna keep it pushing, keep it pushing. I gotta, um... all right, next question. Do I need an instructor's license in Washington? Yes, you do. Uh, how much is the blueprint? We, we have different prices for the blueprint. You can DM me. How do you open a bank account without the physical location? My bank said they need my business license yeah the, yeah, the bank is going to need your business license. They're going to need your business license. Uh, if you're an LLC, they want to see that to open up that business bank account. Um, yeah, they need a location first. Yeah, you're going to need a location because you, you're going to need that because when you fill out your application for the state board to get your school, you're gonna to have to put the location of the school on the application. And you're gonna to have to put that license instructor on the application when you submit it. So you gotta have that building first. Do I have to teach for two years in Washington? Let me break this down to you all. In every state where you're dealing with NACAS, the accrediting commission and the US Department of Education, that's federal. It's the exact same rules and regulations in every state for accreditation and dealing with the United States Department of Education. Now your local state board is different. And the way it works, you can't apply for accreditation until you've been open for 18 months. After you apply, you get accepted. It takes another 12 to 18 months. So it's about three years. That's why I tell you all that. Can't just open the school and boom, get all this government money. It doesn't work like that. I meant to say, how do I change the print to my print on the business land drive? Um, DM me, Giovanna. Yeah, DM me or text me. And I'll help you with that. How do you get a loan? Any recommendations? Yeah, as far as a loan, um, I recommend you all click the link in that bio, uh, hook up with Glenn to get your business credit right because in getting a loan, and this is for everybody, if you go to a loan, just say you want a loan for 50000 but yeah, you haven't paid your old cell phone bill that's $200 or old light bill. They're not going to, that doesn't, it just doesn't look good. So get with Glenn, here get your business, um, your personal debts. When I say debts, stuff that's on your credit, he can get anything removed. He can get you up to a 730, then he's gonna work on a business credit. We can get you up to 250,000 in business credit. Okay, the financial statement. Uh, Vivian, yeah, you gotta have a financial statement. Marquita can do that financial statement for you. So if you DM me, I'll connect you with her on the financial statement. And she can go in more in detail. Do we need to change the financial numbers in the, yeah, you change the financial numbers in the business plan. Um, those are just make believe numbers in that business plan. Don't use those numbers. Everybody's numbers are gonna be different. So if the surety bond is 10,000, you're not putting all that money, no. If it, if it's sure to buy 10,000, they usually probably cost a hundred dollars, something like that. 
Uh, let's see. Do you know the square footage for California? I can't find it. Uh, it's 3,000. I'm, I'm, I'm 90% sure it's 3,000 because we've helped a lot of schools in California, uh, Canary. But I can check with my COO to double check to make sure, but I think it's 3,000. Um, let me see. I'll check with you right now. Uh, we're we're going to keep going. Keep on going. Naturalology, okay. She got that. Um, yeah. Put this back in. We're going to keep on rolling. Uh, I'm in South Carolina. What days and times do you go live? If you put your um, the, your notification on Instagram, now we on here live every Wednesday, but put your notification on because I go on Instagram every day. I just pop in those particular time. Okay, do you have to be an instructor in California? Um, no. If you've been licensed for five years, you can go ahead and do it. Square footage in Georgia is <clears throat> 3,000 square feet. Florida, there's no square footage in Florida. No square footage in Florida, Pamela. Nope. You ain't gonna, that's the thing. I had some people call me all, hit me up all, I can't find the square footage in Florida. There is no square footage. That's the purpose of having someone like me to give you the right information. So if the state board says 2,200 square feet of instructional space, should you look for a few extra square feet? Yeah, because that's the instructional space. Normal class for, master, for the mastermind meeting is usually eight o'clock every Wednesday. Hmm. Yeah, it's eight o'clock Central Standard Time. Now, Michigan ain't got no square footage either. Now, the applications in a lot of these different states can be challenging, um, but it's, it's nothing that we have not done. I've worked with Ms. Belmont for since 1998. She's opened over a thousand schools. So I've seen it all. There's nothing that I have not seen. So uh, do some research for the latest impossible problems. Yeah, see, that's, a, that's another thing too. A lot of these rules and regulations change and sometimes they don't even update it. Uh, on the computer. So sometimes y'all can be misled. Any questions? Um, I answered a lot of questions. 